Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever time it is for you, and welcome to episode six of season three of the Reinvent Your Reality podcast. I am your host, Jen Palco. So happy you could join me here today for another fun conversation in this podcast. And today I wanted to talk about something um, that I feel like not many people are talking about, maybe for good reason, I don't know. But all right, I don't know about you, but if you're scrolling through your social media news feeds and things like that, um, what do you see primarily? So some of you may see a lot of uh, it depends what you're into, right? You might see a lot of toxic elements or um, political stuff or music and games and things like that. Uh, if, if you're somebody like me and you've become a little bit part of the spiritual community, then you will see a lot of Instagram reels and all kinds of stuff on self-love, self-acceptance, all these kind of like self-help, motivate yourself, feel better about yourself types of things. And these are all great. These are all awesome right? I mean, we all want more positive things in our lives, especially on uh, something like social media, uh, instead of all the hate and all the things that come along, you know, the the dark side of social media, all the people's, you know, everybody needs to be right and arguing and all kinds of crap, right? It goes both ways. (laughs) Yin and yang. We have both sides of, of something like social media and we just can't, you know, not use it half the time, even though I have a special love-hate relationship with it, as most people do. Um, I mean, you know, if I didn't use it, then I probably wouldn't stay connected to a lot of people. Not that I'm like great, I have, you know, tons of great friends that I see all the time, but it's nice to feel a sort of connection to people, people maybe from high school or you haven't seen for a while. I I don't know why, just as a human being, um, if you're more of, even though I may not seem like an introvert, um, in my videos and podcasts and things like that, I am uh, a little more introverted. So if I don't stay connected (laughs) in something like online, then I'm going to just kind of be isolated. And I think a lot of people feel that way too. It's like you're missing out on something and not everybody will agree with that, but some people will. Okay. Especially if you have a hard time like connecting with people and, and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, back to the idea of news feeds, um, you know, you may see a lot of motivational quotes and a lot of self-help and personal development type stuff um, and inspirational stuff. And these things make us feel great, right? If we we want to see more of that. We want to see more of that and surround ourselves with more of the positivity and, and all that kind of stuff in life. But are we, this is the question I want to ask, and maybe you agree or disagree, and I don't know, maybe there's no reason for this podcast, but do you think we're kind of using self-love and self-acceptance and we're using it as almost like a homework assignment where we can just check it off another list on the box? Do you, do you know kind of what I'm getting at? It's, it's almost like it's become trendy to love ourselves or accept ourselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we've gone through years of abuse and trauma and not being feeling accepted and things like that. But I feel like some of us, it's almost like we have to work at it really, really hard. And it shouldn't necessarily be that way. It should be more of an organic thing. And sometimes we make it harder than it we, we make it into more of a, a thing than it really needs to be. And I think that's where we struggle in a sort of way when it comes to accepting ourselves. Yes, we have society and society doesn't accept a lot of differences and changes. And, and we see this throughout history, throughout time, you know, and this is another thing I want to bring up the ebbs and flows. Okay. There's always some sort of template of expectation when it comes to society or groups of people, always some sort of expectation. For example, uh, when, when my parents were younger, the expectation was, okay, you go to school, you, you get a job, you stay in the same job for pretty much your entire career. Then you retire. And during that time you get married, you have kids, you blah, 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 and do this and that. And now we're seeing things are gradually shifting and changing. People are kind of getting out of 
some of that mode realizing that that's not the only way to live your life per se, but we're just kind of transferring it to other expectations. And this is where I'm going to kind of tie in self-love and self-acceptance. Uh, uh, um, spirituality, for example, is very trendy right now. There's always been new age stuff and this and that, but it's almost like it's, it's, it's a cool thing right now to accept ourselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's awesome because we've spent so many years not accepting ourselves. But it's almost like we are using it as like this little checkbox. I need to do these things. Oh, I didn't meditate today. Or, oh, I didn't do my self-care today. So I'm going to beat myself up. And it's almost like we, there's still that underlying non-acceptance in a sort of way. I don't know if this makes sense. But I don't know if you can kind of pick up what I'm trying to say here. Okay. We always have some kind of template of expectation. So the expectation now, for example, where it, it, maybe it used to be, okay, you, you do this and that, you get a job and you get married, you have kids and you retire and blah, blah, blah. And that's the expectation um, that I want out of you in society. And now it's like, okay, we've learned to accept ourselves. We've learned to accept other people a little more. There's always going to be ebbs and flows, but now there's still some expectations that come along with that. What expectations am I going to, uh, what kind of pressure am I going to put on myself to love myself or to accept myself? I feel like I need to do this, this, and that in order to get to that spot, whether it's taking personal development, self-help, whether it's, uh, you know, getting a, I don't know, a therapist or something like that to get me here. And that's all good and fine. That's great. Those are the steps that maybe we need to take in life to get to that certain point. But what I want to say is there's still some level of expectation. Okay. So if we don't meet that expectation or we say, I have anxiety or I have clinical depression. Um, you know, if I don't take this drug, then I'm never going to get better. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's kind of, we put the pressure on ourselves and there's always this underlying template. All right. And, and I think for example, we have, obviously we have self-help PTSD for one. Um, <laughs> we just do, you know, it's, it's this cycle of self-love and self-defeat and self-hate that kind of always goes in circles. All right. So it's like, um, the media, for example, marketing, obviously we know uh, we're going to be marketed to as, as that we're flawed, that we have something wrong with us. So we're going to feel, okay, I have something wrong with, with me. Uh, I don't love myself. Okay. This is the example of self-love, self-acceptance. Um, I don't accept myself. I don't love myself because I don't fit into a certain box or, you know, society is not accepting me throughout the years, blah, blah, blah. But I internally... I don't feel okay with that because I'm going along with the expectations in society. So, you know, media, marketing, advertising, to say, okay, you're flawed. You have this void in you. So here's a solution, obviously, most likely temporary solution, uh, but I have a solution for you. And this is just going to fix things for you. It's going to fix and it's going to fill up that void. So we take it like the magic bullet, like everything we do, and we say, okay, I'm fixed. Except a week goes by, ooh, mm, there's still this nagging feeling. Why? Eh, we've watched TV in the meantime, we've gone on social media, we've talked to friends and family, and we've gone out in the world, <laughs> pretty much living our life as a human being. And still a nagging feeling just because of what's going on around us and what's being bombarded with us, and we still feel like oh, the expectation hasn't been met. There's still some sort of void within me. Still feel a little flawed. Oh, maybe I need to work on myself a little bit more. Maybe I need to make up for not meditating. Maybe I'm not meditating hard enough. Maybe I didn't do enough self-care. Maybe I need to spend some money on personal development to make uh, myself love myself more, you know? So it's kind of like this uphill battle in a way, this climb and this struggle, uh, because it's always this external thing, right? Getting to something that's very internal and very organic. Um, and I'll, I call it the self-love trend because I think it has become trendy 
to, um, you know, positivity has become trendy because people are sick of all the the uh, toxic bullshit and arguing on social media. But it kind of goes both ways because then you have experts, everybody claiming to be an expert in the field on self-love and self-acceptance. Uh, but it's basically just the same thing, just in a different sort of way, right? There's always expectations then on what you need to do to be better, okay? Therefore, we're always thinking we're flawed in some capacity. Um, so that's just what I kind of wanted to, to make mention of today. Um, also, this idea of um, we have these unconscious perceptions and two of the, the primary ones that, that I'm going to bring up from the book Biology of Belief by um, Bruce Lipton. And basically, this, uh, we have these two stood out to me, okay? And the, and the first one is, and, and actually, this is from uh, the book When the Body Says No. But in this book, the author refers to uh, Lipton's Biology of Belief because he's talking about... Um, you know, we have unconscious beliefs embedded at the cellular level, cellular level. Uh, they control our behavior no matter what we may think on the conscious level. So they keep us in shut down defensive modes or they allow us to open to growth and to health. So this is often why we stay stuck in a certain mindset or thinking that we're not enough and um, feeling that we're not enough and all kinds of stuff. So the two uncon unconscious perceptions, uh, number one, I don't exist unless I do something. So I must justify my existence. And number two, I have to be very, this is a good one. I have to be very ill to deserve being taken care of. And I can relate to this one a lot too, because um, when I was younger, I had a, a binge eating problem. Uh, I was never diagnosed with binge eating disorder or anything like that or actual eating disorder, but it affected my my day-to-day -day life and I felt terrible about myself and I felt like I couldn't get through these patterns of, of eating and my very poor relationship with food, but I often told myself, well, it's not bad enough. Like, I, I wasn't diagnosed with this, so it, it's all in my head, or I'm making it up, or I'm just trying to get attention, or um, like I, I don't deserve to get the attention in a sort of way because I don't fit into a diagnosis code. Like if you're somewhere in the gray and if it's not so serious where it's compromising your your physical health in a sort of way, or <laughs> you're on your deathbed, or um, you know, then then it's in my head. There's nothing wrong with me. Like, right. I, I shouldn't even think about it, but here's the news flash. If, if it affects your day-to-day -day life and it makes you feel terrible and it affects how you can function in the world, then, then it is an issue. It is important. Okay. And I think that is one of the expectations also. It's like, you know, or the perception rather is, um, I have to either be very ill or I have to be, you know, a victim of really bad abuse in my life or something for, for somebody to actually care, for somebody to justify me, justify my existence. And I think that's what really boils down to, um, whether you're talking about self-love, self-acceptance, is that we all feel like we need to justify our existence. And the ego comes into this as well, right? Because it says, I'm an individual, I'm different from you. So we want to stand out in a certain way, yet we don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? We want to be different, yet we want to fit in. Um, but anyway, these, these types of patterns and perceptions that we have from a very young age can keep us in these shutdown modes, all right? Or keep us in these these patterns that keep repeating themselves over and over throughout our life. And that's why we're always um, looking for magic bullets to fill that void, but it's actually a false void. It's not a real void because it's externalized. Okay. And um, another quote from Lipton's biology of belief, I just wanted to, to mention uh, in the book, he says, early experiences condition the body's stance toward the world and determine the person's 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 unconscious beliefs about herself himself in relationship to the world all right and he calls this the biology of belief so it affects us at the cell level um, and that's where it can cause things like disease the more stress is always constantly um, nagging on us and, and that type of stuff so really it's about getting out of your own way you know, getting out of your own way and not letting 
society and the expectations of what you think um, you should do, uh, you know, tamper on your own rhythm in life. A lot of times people will stop something they really love to do just because of the anticipated expectation or reaction of what somebody might think of that or that somebody might not approve of that. And they actually stop doing something that they in their heart love to do that brings them this self-love and self-acceptance. They will stop because they think somebody doesn't agree with it or something like that. And, and that's kind of what I want to get at is when somebody trips you up in life, all right? Uh, when somebody trips you up and then you're just looking for other people to give you solutions to something that you really already have that should be just ingrained in you, you know? And sometimes it does take a while to pick apart the layers and, uh, and that kind of stuff. But, um, but self-love and self-acceptance shouldn't be a homework assignment to be checked off the list. Hey, we have these very linear minds and, and we think it's like anything else in life. All right. Found my purpose. Check. Found the right career. Check. Found the right relationship. Check. Love myself. Check. 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 Now I can be whole because I love myself. I love myself. But then the next day, oh, I forgot to, I forgot to give myself a little love. Ugh, I'm back to self-defeat mode. I failed. I'll give up, you know? Um, it's kind of like a setup in life, you know? Oh, we should really love ourselves more. Everybody love yourself. You go on Instagram, Facebook. Oh, just love yourself. You are whole. You are complete. I got to say the same shit in my, in my stuff too, but it's like, you know, uh, you are whole. You're already complete. It's just organic. That's what I just told you, right? That's what I just told you. And then the next day, it's like, oh, you should love yourself. But you, you should also buy this because you are flawed. By the way, you're perfect. You're whole. You're complete. But you still need a little bit of work. So I'm selling a program for you for $99.99 and, you know, order in the next 10 minutes and you'll get a 50% discount. It's a setup, right? Tell us to love ourselves and also tell us we're flawed at the very same time. Tell us you are whole, you are complete, but you are also very, very flawed. That's why it's, people have such a struggle um, struggle so much in um, loving themselves. Because <laughs> society sets expectations that is kind of like impossible to meet, right? In a way. I think so. Just a little bit. But back to these ebbs and flows. Ebbs and flows. Just when we think that the world is improving and we're accepting everybody and love and peace, then all of a sudden there's a hate crime or something. And then we throw up our hands and we're like, ah, the world sucks, shit. Ebbs and flows, yin and yang. There's always going to be a balance. You're never going to be able to please everyone. It's like this, um, the latest thing that uh, the Biden administration passed. In, in the U.S., um, you know, what was it, given 10K uh, for student debt. A lot of people are like, it's not fair, it's not fair, it's not fair. Well, yeah, sure, I, I wish, um, you know, me and my family could have gotten money as well back in the day. It's not fair. We've become so self-serving, and I think uh, we're, we just have ourselves to blame for this idea of like never being happy for another person or always having this underlying fear that somebody's taking something away from us. From us. Because we don't feel like enough. 
I don't feel like anybody's justifying my existence by giving away money to somebody else, right? It's always this idea. It always goes back to feeling like enough. It always goes back to that self-love, whatever you want to call it. It always goes back to that kind of stuff. Any kind of fear, right? Fear that somebody, something's being taken away from me, which is basically telling me that I am flawed. Basically, every, just rub in everything that society is saying. Just rub it in more, okay? Rub it in more. It's the template. And we have to kind of live with it because we really have no other way. You know? Societal expectations. I don't exist unless I do something in this world. I need to justify myself. I need to stand out in a certain way. I have that problem sometimes. Um, if you don't know, I make YouTube videos. If you're watching this one on YouTube, then obviously you know that, duh. And, um, and it's just with all the information right now, I feel, sometimes I just feel like an echo of everybody else. It's like, what can I say that hasn't been said before? Well, maybe nothing, but the fact that I'm saying it and you're not, I, I don't know, maybe that makes it any different. But sometimes I want to talk myself out of it because of these expectations. Oh, I made a couple videos, just fun comedy videos because they really like make me happy. I don't do it for money. I don't do it really for view. I mean, I hope somebody watches it and gets a laugh because that'll make me feel really good. Um, but I do because it lifts my spirit up, my heart. It brings some, an element out of me that I don't usually get to bring out, you know, more fun side. But then the little voice in the back of my head, it's like expectations. Oh, well, <laughs> your videos are, most of them are, are serious. You have like, I, mean, I don't know if I really have a niche. Maybe I do. It's obviously self-help self-empowerment type of stuff but if i do something drastically different then what's gonna be the assumption about me expectation about me people will think very differently about me and i can't have that because then they're not gonna watch my stuff or they're gonna unsubscribe or i'm not gonna feel like enough i'm gonna feel like somebody just de-justified my existence right? It all goes back to that. It all goes back to that. And these are the thoughts we have running in our head, okay? And these perceptions. Perception is key because perception is what makes, what makes our life our life. So if we grow up with these twisted perceptions always, then they're always going to be that way. So anyway, I don't know. I just want to talk a little bit, a bit about it today. And, you know, just think about the next time you're doing your courses on trying to love yourself and self-help and personal development, all that stuff is great. And, you know, you spend a lot of money on it and hopefully it helps you, or maybe you had past things you need to work through and, and you feel lost, you feel confused, you, you can't, you know, it, it, it's super, super helpful. But at the, at the same time, we're oversaturated with all this stuff. And sometimes it does, it pisses me off that there's so much oversaturation because, um, I feel like my message might get lost again. That's going back. I need to justify my existence. I need somebody to justify me, right? All it's uh, always the same thing. Um, but really it's, it's, Oh, information overload and I think people see this stuff constantly that it loses its meaning it just becomes meh you know meh you know it's cool it'll make me feel high and and positive and good about myself for like a second and then I'll move on to something else that makes me not feel good just because we're so desensitized to it all the information it's too much for us you know so that's why I want to say be a creator more than a consumer in life you can consume things that that help you that you think will help you um, 
But the moment you switch to being more a creator in your own life and focusing more on what you want to create and uh, and embracing your strengths and your talents instead of focusing so much on your past history and your flaws and, and things like that. You know, it's often just a shift in how you're thinking about yourself and your perception in life to really change things for you. So many of us just sit in these places of victimization and sometimes we need to. We need to work through it and, and things like that, but sometimes we can get lost and we can consume so much self-help and things that we think are bringing us more self-love into our lives. But in the end, it could be more detrimental because then we become obsessed with it and we become attached to almost this fantasy version of ourselves instead of really focusing in on what lights us up right? Why are we always focusing on all the, the dark stuff? We, we have both within us, but it's like sometimes we just become caught in it. And it's almost like a trap that we can't get out of, you know? So I'm going to be cliche and say, you know, follow your light. Go where your light is, where your strengths are. <laughs> Not everybody knows what their light is, where their light is, right? A lot of us are confused, and I'm going to put us in this category. A lot of us are confused and lost in life, but that's life. And you know what? If we're okay with that, that is the first step to self-love. It's when we're not okay with it and we're resisting and we're always trying to control. It's this idea of control and our mind wants to control and it wants us to try and fit into expectations of us and and we lose ourselves in the process because we're so focused and and the thinking gets all muddled you know it's a very blurry line but open up your eyes and really think about it okay why am i doing this why am i going in this direction is it really me or is it the fantasy version of me or the version of me that's echoing somebody else or the version of me that I think I should be or what other people are expecting me to be or is it really me? Sometimes we don't know and that's okay. That's okay and sometimes we have to go through it to get to a better place for ourselves. But to realize that life does not fit in a box. There is not one way to, to do self-love, one way, not everybody can meditate, not everybody can do this and do that, and not everybody should, because everybody is so unique. Everybody is so unique, yet we're not, yet we're all the same, yet we're all the same energy, all from the same place, right? So it's kind of getting at, it's being an individual yet not being an individual yet realizing that we're all in this together, the big picture, the big picture, but not escaping to the big picture so much that we lose ourselves in the process, not giving us away to others just because we think, oh, well, we're all in the same, right? So let me lose myself. No, it's about both. You're a human being. You live on earth. You need to be grounded. So you can't always escape to la-la land either. Okay? And in one of my latest videos, I talk about something called the three treasures. Jing, Qi, and Shen. And we need the three treasures. Our treasures for a reason. Our Jing, our biology. Qi, our life force. And our Shen, which is our connection to the universe. There's something more. Because if you're denying that we have any connection to anything other than just ourselves and earth and i mean you've seen the pictures nasa unless you're one of those people who thinks it's all fake but then i don't really want to talk to you if you think everything's all fake out there like why are we so self-centered in that capacity right human superiority complex i tell you the same reason why we're scared of our own extinction but anyway three treasures we need all three we need to be grounded we need to be alive and we also need to feel connected in a sort of way because that is what gives us the big picture in life and that is what helps us create more than consume. 
So if we're just thinking into our biology and our physical ailments in our life and um, on earth, and that's completely it, then yeah, we may be more prone to just consuming, 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 um, you know, but then what's the point really, you know, what's the point of, of self-love and self-acceptance if we were never beyond like our physical ailments or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy this podcast. Let me know your thoughts. I'm going to post it up. Uh, it'll be on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Pocket Casts. And also, if you want to see my face, it'll be up on YouTube as I always put them up. And uh, check out more of my stuff. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Jen Palco. Uh, my website is jenpalco.com. Uh, I have a book out, 12-Step Guide for the Self-Help Book Addict. So if you want to check that out, please do. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for today. So fun talking to you today. Hope you have a great day. And until next time, until the next time we meet, peace out. <laughs>